Welcome to the art project. Um, I got a video here about AP Studio Art and I'm excited about sharing it with you. It's actually about the AP Studio Art drawing concentration section and what it is, what it means, and how you can do a better job at, uh, at acing the concentration section. So let's get right into it. What is the AP Studio Art drawing concentration? Well, it's a sustained investigation. It's a visual and mental exploration of a topic or theme that is ongoing and demonstrated through your artwork over the length of this course. In other words, you're going to zoom in on one particular theme and you're going to do a bunch of paintings or a bunch of drawings of it. Why? You become more familiar with your subject or topic and therefore generally do more engaging and exciting and honest artwork over the uh, course of doing several pieces. This is how lots of artists do it, and many times it makes for the best artwork. For example, Jim Lee, a famous comic book illustrator. Uh, these are just three examples of his uh, work on uh, Batman. He has done many, many, many uh, drawings and paintings, I guess you'd call them, of Batman. He does some stuff digital. He does stuff with pen and ink. So uh, he he doesn't he didn't just draw batman one time and then stop he did a lot of images of batman vincent van gogh I'm sure you're familiar with him and his series on starry night skies andy warhol and his series of um, marilyn monroe how many pieces do you have to submit you need to submit 12 pieces now you can do 10 pieces and then a couple of uh, details of some of those pieces but there are going to be 12 digital spots to put artwork and i think that it's better to have 12 pieces than to have um 10 or 11 or 9 or whatever i think having 12 is the best thing how many pieces do you need to make that is different than how many you need to submit chances are good your first 12 won't be as good as they need to be you're an artist act like one don't do the minimum do the maximum um, the more you do, the more you'll have to choose from, and you can choose 12 good pieces. How are they submitted digitally? Plain and simple, the concentration section submitted digitally. What are the seven drawing concerns? Uh, what are the things that um, you need to be concerned about the most when you're drawing? Well, there are seven things considered in regards to your skill and your technical competence, and they are as follows line quality, a variety of marks and lines, light and shade, your ability to use value, shading, and so on, rendering of form, composition, surface manipulation, the illusion of depth, not just using from the left side of the paper to the right side of the paper or the top to the bottom, but using the depth um, going beyond the surface of the paper and mark making the way you lay down your marks how creative you get with laying down marks and drawing uh, is uh, one of the drawing concerns i have other videos on some of these drawing issues and you should be able to find links to them in the description down below um, be sure and check that out i may not get the links in there right away but i'll try and get them in the description as soon as possible uh, what are the key descriptors the key descriptors are an individual considerations the readers the readers use to evaluate your portfolio if you don't know the people who evaluate your portfolio they're called readers um, and so I'll refer to them throughout this video and other times as the readers they evaluate your different sections of your portfolio so the key descriptors are individual considerations the readers use to evaluate your portfolio in this case the concentration section uh, they are components of your work that are observable, and knowing them helps you to look for the same things the readers are looking for in order to improve your art and your score as high as you can. Um, think about it. If you know what they're looking for, you can give it to them. These are the key descriptors, and they are scored on a six-point scale. I'm sorry. <laughs> These key descriptors are scored on a six-point scale. Uh, six being excellent strong good moderate weak and one being poor note weak or poor does not mean you should not pursue art weak or poor means you have a lot to learn and it might be about how much effort you put into it 
everyone has to overcome weak or poor at some point in their career choice. The key descriptors are integration of the topic, decision making, originality, engaging the viewer, growth, technical competence, understanding digital and photographic processes, student voice, image quality, and overall accomplishment. And I'm going to explain all of these one by one. How should the topic be integrated? Make it visually recognizable in every single work of art that you do. You can even use this in the breath assignments a lot of times. So um, in this example, Edward Munch has uh, obviously dealt with the human condition in his work. And this is just three examples. Uh, George O'Keefe, obviously flowers. She did flowers over and over and over again and apparently never got tired of doing it. How should you show decision making? Don't do the obvious. Um, Banksy is a graffiti artist and he has so much really great work. Very whimsical and very entertaining. The picture on the very far left over here of a guy who was originally in the um, newspaper article throwing a Molotov cocktail, a incendiary device. And in Banksy's picture, he has changed that into a bouquet of flowers. He made the decision, consciously decided, to change from an um, explosive device to something completely different. And he could, have, he could have been throwing a tomato. He could have been throwing a head of cabbage. He could have been throwing um, Mardi Gras beads. But he chose the flowers, um, and it was a good decision, I think. Um, so decision making. Here's another example, Matisse. Uh, he could have drawn this lady normal normal skin tones, normal skin colors, normal hair colors, but he made a conscious decision to change the colors that he chose, to change up the colors of reality. How do you achieve originality? Not easy, not easy at all, but the best way to do it, I think, I feel, is to create a lot of pieces. Eventually you will run out of the average and be forced into the innovative, all right? The more work you do, the more you'll change it up, the more you will come up with better ideas, and eventually one of those ideas will be original. And you need to create lots and lots of pieces to get there. All of the best ideas come out of the process. They come out of the work itself. Um, if you're not familiar with Chuck Close, you need to look him up. He does a lot of really great work. He started off his career doing, and actually his entire career, has done uh, massively large portraits of people. Uh, so I have some examples here of his self-portraits and you can see how he went from doing them the obvious way to getting a little bit more creative with them, a little bit more original and innovative. Ashley Longshore, another woman who apparently has cranked out a lot of artwork and you can see uh, even though she has chosen some of the same things you see two examples of Abraham Lincoln here, and there's going to be a couple more in just a second. Even though she has done them over and over and over again, each time she does them, she does them a little bit differently. And every time she does them differently, she gets maybe a little bit more innovative and a little bit more original. Sometimes she probably doesn't. Sometimes she may do a work of art that's not really much different than her others. But the more work you crank out, the more likely something is to resonate. How can you engage the viewer? Uh, first, through dramatic composition and the skillful use of color and value. Um, I cannot say that enough. Learn how to use color. Um, an interesting and relatable subject matter or unique subject matter. For example, here's Vermeer. Uh, you can tell probably by looking at these, he is a master of color and value. He sets up a dramatic composition every time. Uh, also, his images are very relatable. Uh, probably all of us can relate with the woman um, making dinner, pouring water, um, working, and uh, learning. You can see the two guys in the middle uh, educating themselves, learning, having a discussion about something. These are things that we can relate with. Um, you can also probably relate with um, love. And so here are a few examples of artists uh, and their... Uh, expression of love in their artwork. How can you demonstrate growth? Make every picture better than the last. How do you do that? 
uh, well, you need to make more than the minimum because sometimes there is regression. Sometimes our next work is not our best. So we need to make lots and lots of artwork in order to get better and better and better. And then when we submit these pieces, we will um, put them in order um, that shows growth. Okay. Um, here are some examples of Vincent van Gogh work that you may not have seen before. And uh, without going into a whole lot of detail, first of all, you probably know Vincent van Gogh is a great artist. But these pictures, especially the one over here on the left of the man with the saw, are kind of awkward. Here's some student work where you can obviously see growth um, from their first drawing to their last drawing. How can you demonstrate technical competence? Well, simple. Practice, practice, practice. Learn, learn, learn. Technical competence is the knowledge of and the skill of the practices required for a certain task. This comes with practice and active learning. What do I mean by active learning? I mean, you don't know how to render form? Learn how to render form. You don't know how to use complementary colors or analogous colors? Learn color theory actively look for and watch videos on how to learn actively learning people are people who are competent at what they do were not competent when they started take this example of a, a child's artwork and it's pretty you know i like it but this doesn't demonstrate technical competence she didn't overlap anything in the sky uh, you know usually birds are in front of clouds as well as beside them so um there's no experience here or confidence and uh, technical ability in the sense of overlapping uh, and also she's like sitting down there on the bottom of the paper as if that's where the ground was well as we know from looking at artwork the ground can go all the way up to the middle of the paper and be you know at the horizon line or even further depending on how you draw it so um compare that with this one um while there are some similarities there is a lot more going on, a lot more uh, obvious experience in this picture. How can you demonstrate an understanding of the digital or photographic processes? Now, this is for students who are doing a concentration using the digital, uh, digital media or uh, photography. And basically what I would say is it's pretty much the same as everything else on this list. But you also need to know how to work your computer. You need to know how to work that um, software. And that's a lot like knowing how to use a paintbrush or a pencil. Um, how can you demonstrate an understanding of the digital or photographic process? Know how to use it. If you know how to use it, it will show up. So compare your work with other digital artists and, photograph, uh, and photographers. What did they do that you like? Learn how they did it and do it yourself. Here's an example of a photographer uh, from down on the Gulf Coast, Mississippi. His name is Dan Andrejos, and I remember when he was in my class one time speaking to my students, he said um, he looks at photographs of other people's, uh, other photographers' work, and he reverse engineers them. He figures out how they did theirs, and then he uses that knowledge to make his own. So learn how other uh, digital media uh, artists and photographers do their work and then you know copy it still like an artist according to Austin Cleon um, at 12 how can you make sure your image quality is strong this is about the photos that you submit digitally today smartphones are mostly capable of good photos make sure to do the following things Make sure you have bright but not harsh lighting. If you look at the image on the left, that was underneath the spotlight, and um, it, it was just way too harsh. Uh, the picture on the right was on the table underneath some um, fluorescent lighting. Um, line the borders of the paper up parallel to the edges of your phone. That's self-explanatory. Uh, in the phone editor, just adjust the colors. Um, you almost never want to go with just the uh, picture the way you uh, shot the picture unless you're a really good photographer. If you look at the one on the left and the one on the right and compare them, uh, the one on the left is a little bit uh, darker. The one on the right is a little bit lighter. Crop the photo. You don't want to show your 
image, uh, like your whole, you know, room where you took the photograph or the table that you took the um, photograph on, you just want to show the image. So be sure and crop your photo down to just the important picture. How can you create a strong overall accomplishment? Make sure you have done all of these things mentioned in this video and your concentration section will be strong or even excellent. Um, watch the video again to better understand each component of the rubric. Listen to what I'm saying and kind of analyze it and look at the examples and pick them apart and just do the best you can to learn each one of these different parts of the rubric. So this has been the art project. Please hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video or even if you thought this video was boring but you learned something from it or you got something out of it, please hit that thumbs up. Um, please subscribe if you have not already. Uh, please click the bell to be notified of the next video and uh, read the description down below because there's going to be some more information down there for you to help you out. Some other videos that you can go and watch to learn about some of those um, drawing issues. Then uh, comment down below if there's anything that I can do to make this video better because um, I probably won't just stick with this one. I'll make another one that's better than this one, I hope, later on. And uh, share this with your students and with other AP teachers that you know. I appreciate it. Thank you. Go make some art.